Hello everyone, welcome to Maker Mindset. Today we are going to talk about over and under extrusion and the actions we need to take to mitigate this problem. So let's begin. We are going to fix the problem of under or over extrusion by calibrating the E-steps on our 3D printer. Here on this channel we not only teach you how to fix a problem, we also explain the reason why you are doing what you are doing. So first, you need to understand what is the extrusion flow rate. To begin with, when you push filament into a printer, it first has to go through the extruder. The heart of the extruder is a NEMA 17 stepper motor. This very precise type of motor will turn 1.8 degrees every time it receives an electrical pulse. The axle of this stepper motor is connected to an extruder drive wheel. This wheel interfaces with the filament and pulls the filament at a specific rate. The number of electrical pulses that the stepper motor needs to receive in order to push one millimeter of filament into the printer is called an E-step. In a perfect world, the Ender 3 extruder would only need 93 steps to push one millimeter of filament into the printer. However, in a real world, things are not that precise. Your extruder may not be pushing enough or may be pushing too much filament through the bolding tube all the way to the hot end. So your printings may end up looking suboptimal. In summary, the extruder flow rate is a slicer setting that determines the amount of filament a 3D printer should extrude. So the proper calibration of the E-steps on your 3D printer will determine how faithful your 3D file will look like in the physical world. Once we have finished calibrating the E-steps, we are going to need to print a calibration cube. So we should clean up the print bed before switching on the printer. For this, we just need a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and a cloth to wipe it clean. For this procedure, we are going to ask the printer to extrude some filament. However, the printer has a safety feature that prevents it from extruding filament unless the print head is hot. So let's take care of it first. On the main menu, you select Control, Temperature. Now we can set the temperature of the nozzle to 200. Here we need to disconnect the bolding tube from the extruder. For this, we need to first remove this blue retention clip. Now we need to push the collar of the bolding tube coupler and pull out the bolding tube. Now you go behind the printer. You will have to press the tension lever and begin pulling the filament out. You will have to keep pulling until you see the tip of the filament. Now pick up your flush cutter and cut the tip of the filament flush with the pneumatic coupler. Now we go back to the menu. We need to select Prepare on the main menu. Now you select Move Axis. Now go all the way down to Extruder. Then you select Move 10 mm. Here you will need to ask the printer to extrude 100 mm. As soon as you start turning the knob, the extruder will begin pushing the filament. The extruder will stop on its own once it has reached 100 mm. Now you pick up your flush cutter again and cut the filament flush with the pneumatic coupler. Now try to straighten the filament out the best you can. Pick up your caliper, make sure it's set to millimeters and open it up to 10 centimeters. Now 
Now measure the filament segment that you just cut, then write down this number. Next, go back to the menu, select Control on the main menu, now select Motion, now go down to Steps slash Millimeters, now go down to E Steps slash Millimeters. This is the current E Steps value for our printer. It is 93.0. Now we are going to use the information that we have just gathered to calculate our new E steps. The original E steps value in this case is 93. We need to multiply this number by 100 and the resulting value will be 9300. Now you need to divide 9300 by the filament measurement you just obtained, which in my own case, will be 91.48. The result of this little formula is going to be our new E-steps value. In my case, the result was 101.661. We will round up our E-steps value to 101.7. And now goes a very important step. You need to save the change you just made. From here, you go back up to menu screens, then you select store settings. Now your new E-steps value is saved. Time to put the printer back together. Here, just to make your life a little easier, you can press the tension lever and push a little bit of the filament into the extruder, so it will serve as a guide as you put the bolding tube back into place. Now, push the bolding tube as far as you can. Now, put back the retention clip around the collar of the bolding tube coupler. Now, you need to press the tension lever and push the filament back into the printer. You keep pushing until you see filament coming out of the nozzle. Now clean up the nozzle. Now we need to go back to the menu, select control, temperature, and raise the temperature of the bed to 60 degrees Celsius. Now we need to set the printer to home. Back to the main menu, we select Print from TF and select the calibration cube that we have downloaded and sliced in a previous video. You can find a link to this video in the description. Now, while the hot end is still hot, we need to do a manual retraction. We need to first press the tension lever. Now we need to push the filament a little bit and pull it out 3 quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. Now we need to wait until the print head is below 50 degrees Celsius and then switch the printer off. Now let's take out the skirt. And pull the cube out. Now 
Now the printer is over extruding just a little bit, but this is to be expected. It is recommended to under extrude just a little bit when you are printing small objects like this. But we can do this kind of fine tuning inside of the slicer software. Now let's pick up the caliper again and measure the cube. The last time that I printed this cube, it was a little short. Let's see how the cube measures now. Very good, it's much more precise. Our printer extruder has now become much more predictable after adjusting the E steps. In a future video, we're going to talk about fine tuning the extrusion inside of the Cura slicer. That's it for now, but let me tell you what is coming next week. We'll learn how to do a firmware upgrade on the Ender 3 Pro. So now, go down in the comment section and drop a little note. I love to read your feedbacks, your suggestions, and some of you made a couple of corrections that were very helpful. If you want to support the channel, now we have a Patreon account. The link is in the description. And don't forget to leave your likes, they are very important for the channel. And I want to ask you a favor, please, 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 don't forget to subscribe. This channel cannot be monetized until it reaches 1000 subscribers. Here is the registration button. If you want to watch the rest of this series, you can click on this link here on the top, and at the bottom, you have a video that the YouTube algorithm thinks will be the best fit for you. So, bye-bye now.